Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's a blessing to be in this gathering. I honor the presence of Dean Carter uh, and so many others who are in the room who have been our guides through this uh, experience. Uh, Dr. Valerie Bridgman, who is always a blessing to see. Let us pray. Eternal God, we gather in this hotel in the middle of Kentucky to say thank you and to make sense of this message. We ask now, God, that we will get to know your spirit and a genuine intimacy, not ecstatic ecstasy, but intimacy, that at the end of this hour, we could say that we have met you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. This afternoon, I want to look at Matthew 7, verses 21 through 23, as well as Philippians 3, 10, right. from the Revised Standard Version. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? and cast out demons in your name and do many deeds of power in your name, then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Go away from me, you evildoers. Philippians 3.10 simply says, I want to know Christ, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. A couple of thoughts have brought me to this preaching moment. The first thought comes from a tweet that I read by the leader of the Nation of Islam, Minister Louis Farrakhan, on Christmas morning, mm -hmm. which read, be an example of Christ consciousness in the world who calls his name but does not know him. Mm -hmm. Be an example of Christ consciousness in a world who calls his name but does not know him. Secondly, last week I had the chance to see the new Broadway play, The Mountaintop. Yeah starring Samuel L. Jackson and Angela Bassett. The play is set in room 306 of the Lorraine Motel on April 3rd, 1967. After delivering his last public address, Martin King, played by Samuel Jackson, retreats to his motel room to relax with coffee and cigarettes. Realizing there that there is no coffee, he calls for room service. A beautiful young maid by the name of Cab May, played by Angela Bassett, comes to the room to deliver his coffee. Afraid of being alone that night, King keeps the maid with him by constantly asking for cigarettes as he waits for Ralph Abernathy to show up. In this hour of pillow fights and politics, laughter and cheer, tears, joys and pain, we see a humanity of Dr. King that we have never seen before. What seemed to be a late night conversation between a young prophet and an attractive maid over cigarettes, coffee and whiskey turns out to be the last night conversation between this young man and his death angel. Mm. What was fascinating to experience in this moment was seeing Dr. King at a vulnerable place in his life. There he was, sitting, fighting, playing, drinking, and talking with death in a motel room. There he was, depressed and hurt by the pain of the reality that his short life would come to an end at the age of 39. Yeah. A husband who would never make love to his wife again, a father who would never put his children to bed again, a preacher who would never preach in his pulpit again, and a dreamer who would never see his dreams fulfilled. Wow. Sitting in that theater, I had to wrestle with the question of what does it mean to be a follower of Christ, not a fan? What does it mean to carry the cross, not simply wear the cross? What does it mean to fully embrace and live the gospel, not just preach it? Yeah, yeah. It was DJ Bonhoeffer who once wrote, when Christ calls a man, he bids him to come and yes, die. Yes, yes. And from these thoughts, I want to talk to us on this subject, what it means to know Jesus. As we have wrestled with this text from the Sermon on the Mount, pulling from it pearls of wisdom and words of warning and a blueprint for Christian ministry, I want to lift up the words from the Apostle Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. While locked up in a prison cell in Rome, Paul makes his desire clear that I may know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Yes, sir. Beloved, to know Christ 
is quite different than knowing about Christ. Mm -hmm. In the English language, we use the verb know to refer to two different things. Mm -hmm. Knowledge about something and knowledge of being acquainted in an intimate way. For example, I could tell you that I'm from New York and I know New York. I know its streets, I know the restaurants, I know the train system. Mm -hmm. But I could also use the same word and say that I know my mother. Mm -hmm. But it would mean something totally different. And in the same way, language has its limits. So in German, there are two different nouns for saying, verbs for saying, I know. Wissen and kennen. If I say wissen, that means that I know about. Kennen, that means that I know. There is a difference. In Germans, they tend not to use that kennen word too lightly. I just go to class with you. I spoke to a brother today who I don't see here who's from Quebec. He's Haitian. And in Creole, the word used to say that I know about you actually is translated to me, I heard about you. Wow. Paul says, I want to know Christ. Yeah. And this trailblazer's journey to know Christ, Paul finds himself getting to know Christ through his own suffering, cross-carrying experience. Perhaps we could share in the discourse on epistemology and the question of what it means to know Christ. Perhaps we can engage in a discussion for a little bit and I can wax eloquently about the ideas of Bertrand Russell and Foucault and the great thinkers of the past. But the reality of the moment is sitting in a church in the storefront in bed style, all the grandmother wants to know is, do you know him? In his new book, The Cross and the Lynching Tree, James yes, Cole yes. surely makes this difference. He says, though we all have somewhat of a relationship with the cross, they're all different. Yeah. Cone courageously compares two of America's greatest public intellectuals, Ryan Hope Niebuhr and Martin Luther King. Cone says the difference between Niebuhr and King was that Niebuhr analyzed the meaning of the cross, but King lived the meaning of the cross. There is a difference yes, sir. between knowing about Christ and knowing Christ. Yes, yes, yes. If you only know about Christ, you can preach about Christ on Sunday morning and let your black man in the country Sunday night. Yeah, yeah. Well. If you only know about Christ, you can profess his name now and praise him and walk onto Capitol Hill and block the, poli the policies and bills to lift the poor. Oh, there is a difference between knowing Christ and knowing about Christ. As we gather this week to celebrate our unique gifts that God has blessed us with of creativity and eloquence, I hope that we never forget the great cost of ministry, the ministry of preaching. Yes. What it calls for us who call ourselves God's trombones. Mm -hmm. Jesus says in the closing lines of the Sermon on the Mount that everyone who cries, Lord, Lord, will not make it in. Yes. But the person who does the will of my Father shall make it into the kingdom of heaven. Yes. The harsh reality, my friends, is that words alone cannot save people. Sermons can free, feed our hungry soul, but it cannot feed hungry stomachs. Wow. Preaching can provide for the hopeless, but it cannot deliver us from the existential hells that many people are really living today. Yes. Yes. Jesus understood this and was probably quite concerned that his ministry would be degraded to nothing more than mere words and flowery rhetoric. My fellow young preachers, let us continue to challenge ourselves to bear the cross and continue the cause of Christ in our living. Let us carry the cross and the cause of Christ and our commitment to the least, the lost, and the left out. As followers of Christ, we have been called to lift Jesus and our living. Amen. In a dim and dark world, in a dim and dark moment in the history of our nation, lift Jesus. When we lift Jesus, the prisoners locked out after they have been locked up will break free from the bondage of a prison industrial complex. When we lift Jesus, the teenager struggling to find out who they are and to be who they are will find a love supreme. Yes. Lift Jesus. I want to close, as many of us have done this week, with a song. Mm -hmm. mm. Contemporary hymn writer V. Michael McKay writes the story of going to visit his ailing grandfather in Louisiana. Mm. His grandfather was the one who introduced him to Christ and introduced him to the ministry. He had spent many of his childhood days with his grandfather. And as he was sitting in this nursing home looking at his grandfather, his grandfather didn't recognize him. He talks about the pain of going to see someone who you love who does not recognize you anymore. He writes these words, I had a talk with someone that loved me, but that I loved, but he didn't know me. He didn't know who I was. With tears in my eyes, I prayed that he would recognize me. For I, yes, I was his child. But then in a while, he looked into my eyes and let me know that he knew me. 
The tears left my eyes and joy filled my heart, for he knew that I was his child. He said, I can tell that you've been lifting Jesus, the greatest word that I've ever come my way. Lord, let your spirit overwhelm me in such a way that men and women will say, child, you look like you've been lifting Jesus. I can tell that you've been lifting Jesus. Yeah. No greater words have ever come my way. Lord, let your spirit overwhelm me in such a way that men and women will say, child, you look like you've been lifting Jesus. Wow. Last night we sat in the Church of the Assumption, the Cathedral of the Assumption, listening to excerpts of Handel's Messiah, and it's amazing to me. Handel wrote that piece 271 years ago, and it really didn't matter who was singing it, right. because the words were the focus. Mm -hmm. yeah. I hope that in my ministry that wow. the ministry that I live would be more important than my name. Mm -hmm. I've heard so many sermons this week. Some of them I do remember. Some of the preachers I remember. Some of the greatest sermons I've heard this week, I don't remember who preached them, mm -hmm. but I just remember the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And on the same end, I've heard a whole lot of sermons. I remember the name. I just don't remember the sermon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lord, I hope I live in such a way yes, yes. that men and women will say, child, you look like you've been lifting Jesus. Yes. Oh. Lift him up by living as a Christian all. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Amen. amen.